Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Killing Time. It's the first episode of 2018. We've been all over the place, or at least I have been. I'm Aya Zaktar, joined by my trusty partner in crime, the man who fights alligators for fun, and sometimes not for fun, which is really weird because you really should choose one or the other. It's just Bob, also known as Juice Pop, also known as Rob. What's up? Yep. Not much. Happy to be here. Yeah, so let's see. I've been in Las Vegas for CES. I came back, and then I had to go to Queens to visit my mom, which was exciting. So I've been like on trains, planes, buses, shuttles, monorails, and all kinds of different forms of transportation in the past month. So I'm pleased to be seated and not moving, other than on the planet as normal. How about you? I have not traveled anywhere in recent weeks. Uh, I've been... In Florida, working, boring. But I have been watching TV. That's good, because this show, Search for Entertainment That Does Not Suck, we do not normally talk about transportation unless I'm just killing time. Ah, 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 ah. I saw what you did okay, there. Okay. Uh, very good, very good. If you're still watching at this point, thank you for still being <laughs> here with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, you guys are still awesome, because <laughs> you have now passed... Level one of hell. Let's talk yeah. about television because television is wonderful at times. Uh, there's a new show on CW called Black Lightning. And uh, have you gotten to take a look at it yet? Yes, I watched the first episode last week when it came out. What did you think? Save the good guys. Um, I actually, I went into it thinking I wasn't going to like it, but I actually... I enjoyed it and am looking forward to the second episode this week yeah it definitely set up a lot of strong characters and everyone's well defined as a 42 minute pilot uh, tonight's the next episode so we haven't seen that yet so we've only seen the first episode yeah. and the whole world is pretty fleshed out as far as I know the executive producer says this show is not tied to the Arrowverse which creates right. a very different style of show because if this thing was related if it was in Central City or near Central City or Star City wherever, where's Arrow? is it Star City? Star City, yeah, and Central City is The Flash. Yeah, so if this show was located in that world, not like the Supergirl kind of thing, but if this was located in that world, it'd be a little strange because there's a lot of social issues that are being addressed in this that you wouldn't It just get. felt, I, I just got to say, it felt more real. I mean, I understand the guy with superpowers, that's not real, but just the the reasoning behind, you know, why he is going back to fight crime, it just felt like real-world problems that someone who lived, you know, close to a a bad city would have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, and we're going to give like some mild spoilers here. You've had a week to watch the show, so I'm not too worried about it. And also, uh, this show has a different feel because we have a grown-up hero, right? So we have a guy who's an adult. He's got kids. He's got an ex-wife. He's got a life. He's got a real job. He's actually a hero essentially outside of work, I mean, outside of being a superhero, which is really right. unusual because usually we have like, oh, they can't know what I do, so I'm a reporter. Or well, I guess Flash is kind of, he helps because he's a police officer. But there's not a lot of those like double hero kind of jobs. And this guy mm -hmm. is trying very hard to make sure that the next generation of kids, is, they're empowered and they make a real difference. And that's a really different tonal shift than, you know, angry Ollie training people and shooting them in the leg randomly. Right. Um, I really liked the show. I thought it was sometimes a little heavy-handed on what they were trying to explain this world is like, but not, not, it wasn't too heavy. It wasn't too hokey or anything like that. Agreed, agreed. And th like, I, like you said, the, the characters are really strong. Um, you know, even the, the villains, the superhero, the superhero sidekick, who was uh, Dexter's dad, if anybody ever watched the show Dexter, Thank the you. sidekick is, is Dexter's dad. Yeah. His Alfred. Um, so, like, yeah. so this, this show is about the return of Black Lightning, mm -hmm. which is unlike a lot of the other shows which have origin story and, hey, what happened to cause your, your pain? Well, this happened, and now I'm going to change the world. It's like, no, 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 no. We actually have a hero who's been in retirement for nine years. He's been living his life. He's been moving on, trying to get beyond this, and he actually asks the smart questions of like, what is the end of Black Lightning? Why should I come mm -hmm. back? The reason why I left in the first place is because we realized there's no end to this. So it's a lot more mature for a CW show. That's the thing I'm a little afraid yeah. about with this series because we have to establish the hero, which is great. Yeah. But I wonder how much of the focus is going to be on the teenage daughters who could be, I, I know there, something happens with them later on. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering the same thing too, but based on the CW, you expect it to focus more on the teenage daughters. 
if it was a different network, you might expect it to focus more on Black Lightning himself. So I guess we just kind of got to wait and see, you know, tonally how it plays out. And I'm guessing they'll, they might alter the focus of the show based on what plays well with the cat, with the, uh, pe- uh, the people watching and the cast themselves, you know, how it fleshes out. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like the pilot, you know, you n- never know how a pilot's going to be or if, what kind of tone it's really going to set because you can have a real shift later on. If something's not working, they can kind of retool it around the teenage girls if they want. But that also seems to be something that's really well served on CW already. We don't, we don't have mm-hmm. a lot of adult based heroes i mean even ollie even though i think he's like the mayor in green arrow at this point is that right right Uh, Right. but it's but it's different because we've grown you know with him from a kid into this this is a guy who's completely established he's been you know spoilers retired for like 10 years now at this point from being a superhero Uh, so i mean it's a very interesting place to jump into the story so to speak yeah and i i've i've been guilty of a lot of puns here it's a even though it's a show that is uh, based on an electrical superhero it's grounded and i didn't mean that as, as a pun when i first said it but now i'm just gonna own it because it is yeah. grounded yeah. a bit yeah it is it is and yeah. one of the best things about this this show i will say because it is a, a mature hero he knows how to use his powers which is yes. really nice because instead of what do i do now you run what do i do now you run a little faster it's like yeah <laughs> Okay. You need to go faster and then go even go faster. A little f- Remember how you thought you couldn't go faster? You can. All right. In this show, we've got a character that already knows how to use his powers, and he's not afraid to use them when he has to, when he's trying mm-hmm. to save his daughters, because I was really hoping this wasn't going to happen in the, in, the, in the show where the daughters are kidnapped. It just seemed yeah. like, oh, great. We have the hostages, and I really hope this is not one of those somebody gets kidnapped every week, kind of like Robin and Batman in the old 66 show. I definitely yeah, but I think I think they're the way they're looking at you know gang members as the you know not main villain but the gang lord is the main villain. But since it's gang related activity, there's a lot of different ways they could go. You know, drugs, kidnappings, uh, prostitution, whatever. I mean, he could be fighting any number of things, and it seems like this gang I f- forget their name is a pretty big deal in this area, and so very widespread, a lot of influences and, you know, some pretty good bad guys that he's going to have to deal with, yeah, so the, to speak. The 100 gang. Now, I'm, I'm, 100, not, thank you. I'm not very familiar with the Black Lightning series, the comic books or his history. I did do a bit of reading about him to figure out uh, where mm-hmm. they were going with this and finding out that the daughters, and this is, a, I don't know if this is a spoiler for the show because they kind of, they hint on it at the end of the first episode. The daughters will have powers at some point and they're mm-hmm. actually, I believe their code names are Thunder and Lightning which is kind of hokey, but also Black Lightning uh, came out in the 70s, so that makes right. sense. Uh, right. And they've actually showed us two versions of his costume, which I thought was pretty cool. I really liked that, that he had a different style a long time ago. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a strong show. I, I'm going to reserve judgment as like, will this be a, something I'm going to watch every week? I'll watch the second episode and see if, it's, if it keeps up. If it does shift to a teenage drama, not the biggest fan of that, because yeah. the, one of the best parts, I will say about this, like I said, the mature hero, there's he doesn't whine he doesn't complain he's not emo he's like smiling like here he's like he's running with his family in this one yeah he might be frowning here because he's dealing with a gang member yeah or a gang boss but he's really really solid and not mentally insane or like mentally changeable as a child or a batman who is insane or yeah not quite as damaged as some of these people are yeah so that's really quite impressive and unusual at this point because we have so many dour superheroes and Mm -hmm. to see somebody actually have a smile even though this is a very gritty grounded show and Mm -hmm. with gang warfare essentially or there's gangs going on and just one guy fighting them back that's not like oh that's there's a guy with a cold gun it's like no no no, it's it's a little different these are real guns we've got people dying in this thing it's it's got a totally different uh, yeah different feet like that and speaking of different feel, let's go and talk about the Flash, which is back. Which is totally took the smiles out this week. Uh, you know, wait now, hang on now. So the <laughs> first first couple of seasons, they were nice and light and fun. Yeah. And then we got like Emo Barry, and he yeah. gets all depressed and he's just really down. And the show becomes unfun to the point where Liz stopped watching. And she's like, it's he's just too yeah. whoopy. And right. this season, they've done a lot of work to make this show a lot more fun. 
in right. general. But of course, the the mid season premiere was the trial of the Flash, which yeah. is a downer a bit because uh, spoiler, he's found guilty because the thinker outthink outthought him, outthinked him. Yeah, that, yeah my, that's one for the books. I just like to go. Okay, the thinker is the most brilliant guy in the world. Whatever, he left some plot holes in this whole, you know, his whole establishment. Thinker's in a wheelchair, the guy, I forget his name, the De- Defoe. He's in a wheelchair, right? Yes. So how exactly did he get into Barry's third floor apartment without his wheelchair? Did Barry carry him up there? Did he crawl? Because he was found on the floor and there was no wheelchair in the seat. I'd imagine the wheelchair is somewhere in the actual okay. apartment. How would I just didn't see it. Maybe, yeah. well, actually, he could have been accosted by Barry and brought in. That's possible. I don't know if he would pick him up and bring him up. I'm just, but I'm just saying this is reasonable doubt that could have been brought in by some lawyer somewhere along the yeah, way. Yeah, so if, if you watch the episode, and we're spoiling it all, because also you know this is the Flash, so he's going to get out of it somehow. So it's not like, yeah. oh, my God, Flash is now in jail. Uh, and also, like, yeah, Flash goes to jail. He can leave anytime he wants. He can phase right through the wall, and he's out. He's choosing to stay at this point. Yeah. He's literally yeah. like, you know, I can do this. Kind of like when Superman yeah, let, lets himself be yeah. caught. And Barry tries to say he's innocent, but he has one of the most inept counsel in the history of television. Yes. And yes. that's why this show stays on the light tone, because it's ridiculous. Here's Cecile right now, who doesn't bother yeah. to ask like any questions. And here's Nothing. another thing. Barry is a CSI. So wouldn't he know how to cover his tracks really well? Yeah. And or- yeah, wouldn't you say, would this guy be this stupid? Come on, give me a break. And or couldn't he just at any point say, hey, Joe, wasn't I at your party? Before this, I know I yeah. showed up on the scene and you found me there, but where was I during the murder? Well, I happen to be uh, not there. I have all of these people who will attest to this. Yes. Nobody is called. No. It's, it, is, it is just mind-bogglingly stupid if you think about it for more than yeah. 10 seconds. As you watch it, you're like, yeah. oh, that's too bad. Oh, the thinker really must have got him on every angle. That must be it. And then... No, it's because they don't even try. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like Barry's pushing them not to try. He says, no. he says, oh, the thinker might have thought about a lot of this stuff. And in one of the scenes, they find it's an elongated man whose name escapes me, his actual real name. He takes photos of the new Defoe, whose brain has been transferred, or his consciousness has been transferred to this other guy, kissing the wife of Defoe. Yeah. This is Defoe, whose name escapes me too. So the angle is then pursued in court that, hey, sh- she could have killed him because she's already with this other guy. The way they explain that and how this works is hilarious. you want to explain this to the audience? Are you saying her excuse as to why she was kissing this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Her excuse with, with tears is because Defoe was, you know, less than 100% man and couldn't do the physical aspect of their relationship, he brought said third-party dude in ahead of time before he passed away to take care of her physical needs. And it was one big happy family. And everybody just bought this and let it go. Like, there was nothing wrong with any of this. Nobody can question that and be like, hey, are you Nobody. sure about that? How long has this been <laughs> going on? Can we see proof of you guys knowing each other prior to this three months ago? Because yeah. this did not happen. Now, granted, the thinker could have fabricated a whole bunch of this stuff. And maybe he's got a bunch of contingency plans where he has this and he's right. prepped his wife on, here's what you say if they bring this up. Maybe. But none of that is actually shown to us. We're just making stuff up to make it make sense and hope that there's some kind of logic brought back onto the show. Uh, And maybe at some point someone could have a recorder when, you know, the thinker or his wife break character and talk like they really are. (laughs) Like 20,000 times to all of them. It's it is right outside the courtroom. Also, (laughs) we we can actually backtrack a little bit. Before we backtrack on The Flash, let's thank our patrons who support Mm -hmm. our show. You guys make this show possible. Thank you so much for still supporting our show. Thank Uh, you. Just by watching this, you're helping us out. By by sending us cash, your hard-earned money, that's really, really helpful. There's a whole lot of stuff I want to do this year, and I think we'll be able to do it thanks to you guys. So thanks for the support. Really appreciate it. If you want to join our Patreon, go ahead. It's patreon.com slash IAZ, I-Y-A-Z. And you can donate as little as a dollar or even less than that if you want to. And there's rewards involved. You can get your name up here. Uh, you can have Skype calls with us. Well, one or two, <laughs> not like every day or something. And there's all other kinds of rewards. Check out the site, patreon.com slash IAZ, and support the show. And it's not just me. It's just it's much easier 
URL. Yeah, so it's all good. It's for finite good. comedy. We got some fun stuff coming up. So I want to backtrack to the Flash and getting caught with the restraining order in the first place. You recall this? I, I do, but you're going to have to refresh my memory. I remember there being a restraining order from the, the wife and he, yeah. Yeah, so the in Flash. In the college and everything, yeah. You know, the fastest man alive, the guy who knows to change his voice to disguise himself from Iris at times in the first season, the guy who shakes his face enough or vibrates enough that you can't see him, he breaks into the home of the Defoe's, starts checking around stuff, and is caught via photograph that he is even there. Now, why the Flash is not, one, vibrating to the point where you cannot identify him, or two, wearing a mask. Going slow enough so you can see him. Yeah, and three, why is he bothering to go slow at all? Did he just not have enough food that day? There's no explanation why the Flash, who can tap into the speed force whenever the hell he wants, just decides, you know, when I get in here, I'm not going to go fast. Yeah. And he's actually worried about getting caught. Why would he slow down? And also, Barry's supposed to be, you know, Barry Allen's a very intelligent guy. I mean, not supposed to be a moron. (laughs) Give me a break. He's supposed to be intelligent. They throw out some of that stuff for the sake of just the lightness of the show, but I would still yeah. like them to have some internal logic. I am picking yes. the show apart a little bit. I still enjoy it a lot, but it's just these glaring problems of, yeah. okay, great. Iris is still incredibly unlikable because yeah. of that line, we are the Flash. Yes. That team Flash. Hey, hate that no, no that's hate that's that. caused a lot of hate, and I totally understand it because she's totally with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I am the Flash. We're Team Flash. You are my team. Yes. I'm Flash. And I don't know how Iris becomes like the head coordinator. Yeah, how'd that happen? You go from doing nothing to being the head of this? Uh, no sense whatsoever. We got, we've got we got freaking Harry from her Earth 2 here, and you're the lead? Yeah. Yeah, one of the smartest guys in the universe, in the multiverse, <laughs> and you're in charge. It didn't make a heck of a lot of sense Yeah. yeah. why she's the lead. Otherwise, she doesn't have much to do, I will say, because what else would she do? Yeah. She's just uh, she's a human being who – what's her job? She's still a reporter? We don't know. I don't think so. The only thing we see her doing now is leading Team Flash. Yeah. 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 Which she you know, should not be. You know, at least, you know, Cisco is, you know, inventing things and probably making money that way. Uh, but I don't know what she's doing. There's there's definitely a lack of some backstory here. Killer Frost is is interesting as well, so that's that's good. I like that. Yep, Caitlin's very interesting, and it's interesting how it's two different people completely. That was a fun gag on the show that the bunch of guys actually had like an inside joke with Killer Frost, but not Caitlin, and yeah. that kind of hurt her feelings, which I thought yeah. was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I like that she puts on a jacket when she knows she's going to change. She's like, oh yeah, this is what she's going to want to wear. I don't want to wear this. Yeah, <laughs> the, it's those little moments that are fun. Yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if they make if they bother to make Barry smart again, that'd be nice. I'd yeah, be at some point Barry. that'd be that'd be great. Smart Barry yeah. was around for a season, like he could yeah. figure stuff out. Yeah. But I remember he was reading all those books and figuring all this stuff out. He said he his short term memory he could only remember it for a little bit, but he knew all this stuff. I mean, yeah. So you know, you'd think he'd be able to figure out like a legal defense. <laughs> yeah, really. At least write it down. Uh, I yeah. look forward to the eventual finding out the cracking of the code that Barry had from the episode episode one. Yes. What I can't wait for this house is bitching to make sense. <laughs> this house is bitching. I look yes. forward to this. Yes. I hope it's very funny uh, and it should be good. Is there anything else we'd like to review before we get out of here? I think that's enough. A couple of CW shows uh, for the week. All right, people, go watch that stuff if you want to. That's on CWTV.com. That stuff's free. They don't, yep. they don't require any authentication. They do have ads, which is a little bit irritating and can't really skip them. But, hey, it, what do you expect? It's not bad. They have apps on Apple TV, Roku, and they're not paying us for this. I'm just remembering because, hey, if you want to see the show, you're like, I don't have cable. You can actually watch it online for free, completely legally, without yep. any problems. So yep. good on CW for that kind of thing. So let's get out of here. We'll see everybody next time on Killing Time. Bye. Is that a Mick Ultra you're drinking there? That is true. <laughs>